Hmm. Okay. Awesome. Hi, Anna. Hi, Edson. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. normal. Awesome. Cool. I don't know what's happening down there, but I'll just ignore that. All right. So excuse that. Um, I'm just going to introduce what we're doing today. This class is all about learning. So this is something that's relevant to everybody on Verbling because we're all learning a language. And languages can actually be notoriously tough to learn. They just take such a long time to get to a good level. It can sometimes be a bit disheartening when you invest hours and hours and hours of your time and you still feel like you're making slow progress. So today what we're going to do is have a look at an article with some tips for learning things faster. And we're going to see what we can do about helping share tips and share advice. Oh, that was weird. Right, I'm back, I think. Um, I knew there was something funny about that. Can you guys still hear me? Yes. <laughs> Sorry for that. Okay, so let's carry on. Um, anyway, the point of this class, as I'm trying to explain, <laughs> is that um, we're going to be sharing our tips, basically, for um, how we can learn a language better. What works for us? What are the useful things to do, to use, resources, techniques, whatever it might be? So if you've booked a slot in this class, do come along in now. Apologies for the weird beginning of this class, but we'll see if we can get on with it. Um, and just while we're waiting, if you haven't ever checked out Verbaling Teacher Pages on Facebook, you might want to check those out because there's a lot of useful info there, and you're able to get in touch with us if you have questions or if you'd like to find out more about what's going on here on Verbaling. So with that said, um, what we're going to do is just say hi to the students, and my question for for the beginning of today's class is what do you find the most frustrating thing about learning English? What's the thing that really ah, gets you annoyed? Um, so we'll say first of all hello to Anna. Can you start us off, Anna? Hello, teacher. Nice hi. to see you. Nice uh, to see you too. What was your question? <laughs> <laughs> My question was, what's your, what's the most frustrating thing for you about English? Uh, to say something and don't pronounce it well, mm -hmm. and, and people don't understand what I am saying. Okay. It's very frustrating. And yeah. the, but it's not the worst. Uh, the, the worst thing is when you learn something and you, you use it to wrongly and then you sound different than you you want to sound you uh, for instance uh, I, I will give you an example mm -hmm. uh, once I learned that uh, we should use it on earth to to emphasize things and but I I had no idea that she uh, I could sound impolite this way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yes, I think that's a really, you've brought up two really good points, but particularly the second one that you mentioned, I think is something that is really difficult, um, because you can learn, you know, you can memorize words, or you can memorize phrases, but it's, far, it's very difficult to find out actually how they're used, with what other words do they go, and where do they go in the sentence, and all of that kind of thing, so... Good point. Great start. Thank you, Anna, and welcome. Natasha, hello. How are you today? Hello. I am fine. Thank you, Mark. What about Wonderful. you? I'm great, thank you, also. Um, so, Natasha, tell us, what is the most frustrating thing about learning English for you? Uh, for me, uh, okay, I uh, I think that uh, I spent a, a lot of time by learning new English words, but unfortunately I forgot them very quickly. So I need to uh, repeat them again and again, uh, and uh, only in this case I can learn them. Uh, uh, in in uh, I, I can uh, uh, have them in my memory more longer. Mm hmm so yeah I see your point Natasha it's, it does take a very long time 
to actually put no. things that you learn in your long-term memory, right? You can remember them for like a day, but then if you don't practice them, you forget them again. Good yeah. point. It's All right, thank you for sharing that. Wonderful. Welcome to the class. Thank um, you. Susan, hello again. How are you today? Are you there, Susan? No, I can't hear you, actually. That's a bit strange. Um, all right, I will come back to you in a moment. Let's say hello to Ahmed. How are you, Ahmed? I'm fine, thank you. Wonderful. Um, tell us what you find really frustrating about English, learning English. Mm, many things, actually. <laughs> I think the list uh, is long. <laughs> the most frustrating thing for me is writing, I think. Okay, why? It's, uh, um, because I think when I just want to write in a formal way and and I had to uh, take care of grammar, um, punctuations, <laughs> everything sh sh shall be good. And yeah. So writing is, is, is the most uh, hard thing for me. Also, I use writing a lot in my work in English. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, actually, sometimes we don't we don't care about uh, these details. You, the you, you tell us about it, but it's still uh, very hard for me yeah. to make a good grammar. To make all this, everything is is perfect. It's very very hard for me. Yeah, for sure. So I think the thing that you're sort of saying about writing, Ahmed, is that. All of your mistakes are on the paper for everybody to see, right? When you're speaking, it's kind of like, oh, you can skip by a few things, and if you make the odd mistake, it's not such a big deal. But with writing, it's there forever, right? Yeah. So can be a bit, yeah. I know what you mean. All right, so welcome, um, and thank you for sharing that one. So we've got a, a bit of a list going on here. What we're going to try and do is to try and come up with some ideas to help these problems later on. So, Ksenia, how are you today? Hello, I'm fine, thank you. Wonderful. How many eyelashes have you been done lately? Have you been working hard? Mm, no, actually. <laughs> I, <laughs> um, because uh, the winter is coming, or something like winter, mm -hmm. I feel lazy, so <laughs> I don't work a lot. Fair enough, fair enough, Ksenia. So, um... Maybe you, you can put some time towards your English instead. What do you find the most annoying thing about learning English? Frustrating? Gets you annoyed? Of course, I think the most annoying is that I don't have as much time as I want to have on learning English. Mm -hmm. Because okay. someday I have a lot and I can learn a lot of words new. And the other day I don't have a... Uh, Mm, in five minutes, I don't have five, five minutes to repeat the, the words, so I forget it. Yes, absolutely. So frustrating. So almost like a lack of time or irregular study time. You don't have as much as you'd like, and then you get into the problem which Natasha was mentioning, where you start forgetting what you've learned. Yes. Okay. Good one. Thank you, Ksenia. Welcome. Um. Edson, hello, welcome. Hello. Have I met you before, Edson? No, not yet. This is well, the there first you go. Time. Wonderful. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Where are you from? From Brazil. Okay, Brazil. welcome. Yep. Yeah. Um, so Edson, tell us about your perspective. What do you find most frustrating about English? My frustration is when you are talking to somebody and you have a lot of ideas but suddenly you stop talking because you don't know not just how to pronunciate the word but you don't know you you have been memorizing the words but to say something is, is pretty difficult. You stop talking, you stop thinking, you try to think in some words but it's impossible to, to, to say that time. 
Yeah. And as well as when you try to memorize a plenty of words in one minute or two or sometimes. And you try to memorize, for example, 20 words or just a little, just uh, a, little, a little less or um, more, t uh, more words and you you hear, you hear, you read, but nothing gets in it. It's not possible to ingrain the words in your in your mind, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And some grammar as well is kind of difficult to to memorize, to remember, because you you want to say, but you say something wrong, and you need you try to you try to how can I say this. You try to 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 see to remember what you said, mm -hmm. but try, you try to correct yourself. Yeah. For example, and it's a pretty difficult to to do this, and as well as when you you are listening to others and you try to correct them as well. Okay, so maybe a bit of a struggle with using what you've learned or what you think you've learned. So learning something is one thing, but actually using it correctly is another story altogether. And it can be really tough to try and remember what you've learned and then to say it right when you need it, right? Yes, yes. Okay. And I try to you know, try to do something like when I um, hear something from from a friend, for example, mm -hmm. and he says something and but he don't he he does know he doesn't realize that he he made a mistake, and I just correct my correct him in my mind. But I don't. I so sometimes I am um, just a little scared to to say to him that he he made a mistake, and because you know it's kind of boring. Maybe I don't know <laughs> because yeah. I don't know how how he he's gonna he's gonna yeah. show me the situation. Oh, you are correcting me. Why you are correcting? Let me correct myself. Yeah, yeah like for this. sure. I think that probably depends on the person as well, Edson. Um, you could maybe talk to him and say, look, would you be interested in just keeping an eye on each other's English? And if you hear me say something wrong, tell me and I'll do the same for you. Yeah. And then it prepares him ahead of time so he doesn't feel like you're going, oh, I know English better than you. So, <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. That's thank great. you, Edson. Nice okay. to meet you. Welcome. You too. Um, Jose, hello. Welcome. Hello, Javi. How are you? Uh, I'm doing very well. Thanks for asking. I do. Yes, thank you. I am too. Okay. So, Jose, spill the beans. What do you find yes. frustrating? Okay. Sometimes I feel frustrated because I don't like uh, to commit uh, uh, mistakes. Uh, then, when I release that, uh, I commit uh, committed a mistake. Uh, I feel frustrated about it, and um, I think uh, I don't re re realize. I don't realize uh, that uh, I don't realize uh, that uh, I am learning uh, English. Sometimes I have a uh, bad uh, feedback about the improvement learning English and um, study a uh, foreign language. Yeah, um, absolutely. It takes, uh, a, 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 takes a long time, I think. Uh, uh, you can't uh, learn English in one, two months. It takes uh, years to, to, to learn, to, to learn uh, English uh, properly. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, one, uh, one of, the thing, of the things that are more difficult about uh, learning English is the pronunciation. The pronunciation, the pronunciation is... Uh, a uh, very difficult uh, task. I think if you are uh, native, uh, uh, you don't have uh, to, to to make effort to to learn about pronunciation, about writing. You you learn the language in a natural way. But uh, the people that um, uh, we are uh, we are here learning English. Uh, all of us uh, are uh, uh, foreigners. Uh, then it's more difficult yeah. to to us 
we have uh, to make a big effort to learn uh, English. Absolutely, totally true. So making mistakes, I guess what you're really saying with that one is it's kind of, um, it's, you have to be courageous kind of really to just even open your mouth and then when you make mistakes you've got to be um, resilient, you've got to be resilient because you have to swallow lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of mistakes before you get anywhere. And it can make you feel like, oh, I suck or whatever, make you feel bad yeah. about yourself. But it happens to everybody. It's kind of the only way to learn it, really. So, good point. Thank you, Jose. All right. Estella, hello. Hi, Amy. Nice. I don't think I've met you before, have I? No, I do not. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. So lovely to meet you. Where are you from? I'm from Spain. Which part of Spain? Uh, in the south east coast in a city called Alicante. Okay, very famous for wonderful beaches, right? Yes. <laughs> um, did you go to the beach over the summer? I don't really like too much the beach. <laughs> <gasps> oh, still you're from Alicante and you don't like the beach? No, maybe joking. because I have next to my house. <laughs> maybe, yeah, fair yeah. enough. <laughs> um, well, it's lovely to meet you anyway, and welcome. Yeah, me too. So Thank tell you. us about your frustrating English experiences. What do you <laughs> find the most... Ah! Yes, I have it clear. I really hate phrasal verbs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. I you thought somebody thousands. might say that. <laughs> so I, I find it really difficult because I don't have the... I, I learned... Uh, the phrasal verbs, but I memorize them, but they really don't use them. So it's really, really difficult to to know all the phrasal verbs if you don't use them. Yeah. So it's quite annoying for me. <laughs> for sure. I think yes. probably the whole class could agree with you that phrasal verbs are one of those things that people find really hard about English in particular because they're so similar to each other. But they have so many different meanings, and, and as you say, it's really hard to use them when you don't have anyone to practice with that much. And too many prepositions. <laughs> prepositions, we'll add that one on. Excellent. All right. Thank you, Estella, and welcome. Thank you. Um, Jean, hello. Welcome. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. How about you? Yeah, I'm doing well too. Wonderful. So, Jean, what is your? Have you found anything out left that we haven't got yet on our list of frustrations? Um, no, I think I am going to summarize everything. But uh, okay. for <laughs> that, but but for me, uh, something that I'm struggle, struggling, and I think is the problem is not the language. It's, it's a problem with myself. <laughs> I don't like grammar. I hate grammar. <laughs> um, and uh, it, uh, either in my native uh, language, the grammar was a problem for me. I think for this reason I study engineering instead something like uh, languages or something like that. But yes, mm -hmm. uh, grammar and I, sometimes that something that could be annoying for me, annoying for me is the accent. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about my accent. I know that my accent is is awful, but I'm talking about the accent from from people who is native speaker. And sometimes it's pretty complicated to understand them. For mm -hmm. example, for, for me, your accent is 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 simple because it's 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 a strong accent. But mm -hmm. for example, when I hear people from Texas, they speak pretty fast and they uh, join all the worlds and everything together and sometimes uh, my brain is like uh, overwhelming trying to figure out what they are trying to say mm -hmm. uh, but on the other hand sometimes the accent is pretty funny like the people from Australia when you watch television and see uh, programs from Australia for me is, is funny because it's, it's a mix between a British accent and a local accent and it's, it, for me it's funny but uh, it's something that some, sometimes is annoying because yeah. it, it, you know everything, you know the words and when they are speaking to you face to face 
sometimes you cannot, you don't have idea what they are talking about because mm. their accent is is pretty difficult. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, there's two extra things that we didn't have, John. And I, yeah, I think you're right about accents. I've definitely found accents an issue when I've been learning other languages. Um, but grammar, hating grammar, oh, couldn't agree more. But I think there are some things that we can come up with today that can maybe try and work around these problems. And we're going to share our ideas. I also welcome, John. It's lovely to have you, by the way. Um, I just want to say hello to Adnan. Are you there? Aditya. Hello, nice to meet you. Where are you from? Nice to meet you from, from Saudi Arabia. From Saudi Arabia, welcome. Um, tell us what you find mo most frustrating, Adnan, about learning English. Mm, about me uh, spelling or uh, when I want to write anything, I find very difficult mm -hmm. to spell that because some uh, some letters is silent. I don't know how to write that. This big problem with me. In a little bit of grammar, this is what I found very difficult. In. Okay, so um, grammar is one of the things that you share pet hates with Jean, and also speed. Was it you said? Sorry. Did you say speed? I didn't quite catch what you said first, Adnan. So, yeah, Did you mention... I, I what was... You mentioned that you don't like grammar, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what was the point before that? You mentioned something else. I think I misheard you. Uh, about grammar, I said uh, because... Uh, even in my native uh, language, I found this difficult sometimes. You too, when I take grammar with my teacher, if I try to use it, I find something uh, different, not as I I took with my teacher. All right. So I'm um, being maybe um, unprepared, possibly, or. Um maybe not learning something in the classroom that you need for real life. Something like that? Yeah, yeah. And okay. uh, I found it uh, difficult with the uh, argular fair. Yeah. All right, so thank you, Adnan, and welcome to you as well. So, guys, what we have is um, a list of different problems. Um, and so what we're going to do is something slightly different today to what we sometimes do otherwise. Um, I'm going to give you all the link to today's article, but we're not actually going to spend much time reading it today out loud. We are going to read it by ourselves. And what I would like you to do is to pick a problem. So hopefully you can all access the, the chat box, but I will... Um, Read those out, and I'll assign you a problem, one of the things that we've mentioned today. What I want you to do is just to spend a few minutes checking out the article, which has some tips for learning something faster in general, and see whether you can come up with any solutions or tips or ideas to overcome the problem that has been mentioned. So what we'll do is we'll specify the problem a bit more and then we'll assign somebody to try and solve the problem. And if you don't have much luck with your problem because you can't think of anything or whatever, you feel free to contribute to the other problems. But we'll take one problem each to present. So we'll present the problem and what we think might be a possible solution. So the first thing you need is the link. So if you have the verbling chat, you've got it there, and I'll now share it in the other chat box. Um, so hopefully you can all click on that. Please let me know if you can't find it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go down the list of problems, and I would like you to choose one. So if you want to go for that problem, um, let me know. Let me just put a, a bit of a document up so that we can see what we're doing. Um, okay, 
can make that font a bit bigger. Share the screen. All right. So the first problem is pronunciation. Does anyone want to um, go for pronunciation? I'll start typing up the problems. If you want to go for one, just call out and I'll put your word, um, your name next to the word. So the second one is usage of, of words or phrases. How to use things you've learned. Um, forgetting things easily. We'll number these. Nope. Then we've got um, writing, getting it correct. Five is not enough time to study. So Anna is commenting. Guys, if you can just um, to be misinterpreted. So can I add that one on here, Anna? Misinterpretation? Yes, Amy. I I I was trying to to explain to you. You know, because sometimes you know the meaning of something. Yeah. You you know, but you don't know how to use it properly. Uh-huh. Yeah. And you don't know what you you are trying to convey, you know? Yeah, sure. So and it's sort can, of related to being polite in a way. Yes, but you you you, you don't intend to sound it. you you know yeah, it's sure. very yeah. awkward. Okay. So whoever wants to take that one can interpret it and um, expand it a little bit according to what Anna means. So that's fine. Um, what else have we got? Phrasal verbs. Um, prepositions. Prepositions. Um, let's put hating, struggling with grammar. Accents. All right, so here's a list of stuff. And um, your solutions can be anything you like, guys. Okay, so it might be something that you find in the article. It could be a technique, um, some that you can do to change the way you study. It could be resources, like um, any websites that are really handy for practicing grammar that you know or some great YouTube videos that explain things really well. Um, for number three, forgetting things. Maybe it could be something that you use, a technique or a way of remembering or whatever you like. Um, so let's see if we can choose one of these. So um, let's go through one by one. Natasha, which one would you like to go for? Number five for Gesenia. Are you there, Natasha? Oh, all right, Jose, which one would you like to go for? Writing. Writing, all right. Jose is going to solve all our writing problems for us. Don't oh, send his name wrong. Um, Jean, which one would you like to go for? Prepositions. Okay, well done. Awesome. How about you, Estela? Pronunciation. You want to do the same one as John? No, prepositions, no. Pronunciation. Ah, sorry. Pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, perfect. Well done. Edson, which one do you want to go for? Can I choose two? Like yeah, pronunciation sure. and accent. Okay. So I'll we'll put you both for those two. Okay, Anna's already. No, Anna hasn't chosen. Which one do you like to do, Anna? Number two. Okay. And Ahmed, which one would you like to do? Mm, no, enough time. Okay. So this is Ahmed as well. And Adnan, which one for you? 
Actually, uh, I want to uh, write thing, but uh, I think uh, can I use the right thing with the uh, yeah, sure. That's okay because we can have. I'm sure different from each ideas from each other. One thing to worry about. So okay, that's our list, guys. I'm gonna leave that up just so that you can remember what you're doing. Uh, I'll give you about I don't know five five to ten minutes, and then we'll just make a short little. It's not exactly a presentation. It's just your ideas, and when you do share your ideas, other students will be welcome to add or take away or whatever um, to see if we can come up with some solutions. So don't forget to check out the article. Actually, I will just show you quickly so that we all know looking at. Um, it's this article here. There are six different points. Um, so if you want to figure out what they mean and see if they apply to your point, that's great. Have a quick flick through. Um, and we'll meet back here shortly to share our ideas. So good luck. If you have any questions, just let me know. I'll be here for the whole time. See you soon. Just to let you know, guys, if at any point you feel like you're finished and ready, just let me know, either by saying something or typing something, so I can see how well you're getting on with it. Cool, thank you, Sorry, teacher, but it's supposed to read. Um, you can use the article to help you, Edson. So you might want to read some parts of it, or you just might want to ignore it. It's up to you. Just use it as a resource to help you come up with a solution to the problem, okay? Okay.
Okay, I already have it. Okay, thank you, Estella. So we've got two people ready. We'll just a few more minutes and then we'll present. Okay. Me, I think I'm ready to. Okay, awesome. Thanks, guys. So what we'll do is we'll get started with those of you who are ready, and the others of you can keep on thinking if you like, and come join us when you are. So Anna, since you were first, would you like to go for, for us and tell us how we can solve this yeah. problem of usage and phrases okay. and being impolite? Okay. Actually, I wish I I could give you all. A uh, great piece of advice <laughs> to solve a problem like this one because it is the worst problem in English in, <laughs> in my eyes because this one can lead to to a lot of trouble and can put you in hot water. It's the only mistake that she can really harm you, you know, because mm -hmm. it can make people really mad at you. And what he, what he happens to me um, is that that's the thing. I I I have a message that and and I tend to transmit and and I put it in words which to me best reflect what I I'm think. But many things you know can intervene to prevent the the intended message from being received. And sometimes I, I simply learned in a new expression or idiom and I'm dying to, to use a new, you know, I'm dying to say and then I, I think, oh my gosh, I'm going to show off now because my, my English is awesome. And when I use it, my gosh, I, I wish I could vanish. Because <laughs> teacher, yes, it is awful. If you, if you are trying to, to be nice, you, you know, to say something good and, and you sound impolite, uh, it's the most em embarrassing and, and awkward thing, thing that can happen to, to someone. Yes, that's and it's, true. So what can we do about it, Anna? Okay, uh, first of all, you cannot use everything in, mm -hmm. in, a, in a class, in a group class, for, for instance. Because the teacher can get mad at you, can block you, you can be mm -hmm. expelled from from the course, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't matter if you try to explain. Uh, you you have to be careful ab about how to use English, and you you have to to get a teacher in private and ask mm -hmm. about. You. All expressions, but it has to be a teacher that you that you can trust, someone who likes you, mm -hmm. and and also someone who is honest. Because if if it, the person likes you but is very lenient, the person would say that everything is okay to say. I think it's okay. Mm -hmm. I think it's okay. And then you you say in a in a group class and the teacher, oh no, just. 
this girl or this woman is very impolite. I don't, I don't want her in my class. You okay, know? great ideas, Anna. Mm. Um, actually, I had a student who did this, and she learned a lot. So I think that's an solution to the problem. Um, yes, did you have anything teacher. else you wanted to add? Yes, but uh, that that solution uh, costs an arm and a leg now. <laughs> That's the dollar True. is going through the roof. So I don't know. I I wish I I could have a better solution. All right. Well, that's a start. And if any of the other students want to add anything, they're welcome. But thank you for sharing that, Anna. Awesome. Um. So next was I think Estella. Are you ready to? Give us your solutions, Estella. Yes, I am. Cool, let's go for it. So for improving the pronunciation, I think it's useful uh, to listen to podcasts uh -huh. in English, like, such as the BBC and those things. Uh -huh. uh, I think it's also useful uh, to watch TV movies and series Yeah. in English, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I think also it's useful that in YouTube we have uh, channels with English pronunciation. Yeah. And I think it really can help. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing maybe it's uh, to have or to meet with uh, English speakers. Yeah. Or I don't know once a week or something. <laughs> yeah. With uh, with Erasmus or I don't know. And for example, you, you can also record your voice to, yes. to know how, how you sound. Yeah. And you can improve with that. And another thing is listening to music. Yeah. Of course. And, and I don't know, there are a lot of things. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Thank you. That was that was like a, a flood of ideas, Estella. Awesome. Um, so that's they're all really really good. I think the important thing is that with pronunciation, the quality of your listening is important. You need to listen for the pronunciation. How are the speakers saying things? Not just what they're saying, but how they're saying it. Um, awesome. Thank you very much, Estella. Who was next? I think maybe Edson. Yes, as I mentioned, a pronunciation accent. Actually, uh, yep. Currently, I am using the, a book, and there is a CD, I put it, and I try to record my voice uh, from reading the book, yep. and I try to, yep. to listen to the, the CD to see how is my, my voice mm -hmm. is, is, is getting better or is getting worse or my pronunciation. And my uh -huh. accent is terrible as well, because some uh, some words, some vocabulary is difficult for me, even for me to understand myself sometimes, because sometimes <laughs> I speak very fast, even my own uh -huh. language. Yeah. I speak very fast, and my <laughs> my friends do not understand me, <laughs> and mm -hmm. it makes it difficult. But I use as well YouTube, for example. Yeah. I hear guys talking to talk to each one, and I try to 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 record my voice to see what's what uh, to heard what they are talking to, uh, what they are talking to, and mm -hmm. I try to record my voice and to see if it's it's kind of similar or different, very different the accent and pronunciation of the words as well. Mm -hmm. Because pronunciation the words when you pronounce it, for example, a verb or uh, adjective or the verb, I don't know. If you, another guy does not understand you, it makes it difficult to the conversation between yeah. the guy and me. And they yeah. probably he's gonna look at me. What do you are trying to say? What you what mm -hmm. you mean by saying this? And I have to this difficult with the pronunciation. I try to. To say over and over again to for him to understand and this kind of of, of situation, but the what what has been and helped me a lot is about the mm -hmm. book. I hear the book 
oh, sorry. I read the book, I record my voice, and I record it even more and uh, more, and more. And Great. some difficult Thank words. You as well. You can practice. All right, Edson, that's a great idea. Um, reading along to an audiobook and recording your voice and then comparing. Awesome. Thank you so much, Edson. Um, okay, let's go next to Jean, who's doing prepositions. What have you got for us, Jean? Um, I think, uh, first of all, is yes, um, as in the article mentioned, is repeat and repeat and repeat. Is I think is is something very important. To try to practice and um, before to practice, as in the you know the article mentioned, is do not reinvent the wheel, but you can find the right technique to you the, to to basically fit for the way you learn. And this is mm -hmm. something important. You you need to identify what is the best way to learn, and what is the best time for you to learn, and identify where is your most common common mistake. And you have a 80-20 rule. I don't know if you hear about that. That way you identified 80 percent of your your problems in 20 percent of the the most common things or your most common mistake. Um, mm -hmm. As soon as you identify what is your problem, try to embrace your problem and say, okay, uh, if my problem is with this specific preposition, I will practice and practice this as, as until I get comfortable with this, uh, use this preposition and I can jump to another preposition. Because exists a lot of rules and maybe mm -hmm. some of these rules you are not using uh, to come too frequently and doesn't make sense okay. learn something that you maybe will once will use once in a while is better if yeah. you improve where, where in, in, in the main point where you are struggling. Awesome! Jean, that's a brilliant solution and I've heard about this 80-20 rule before um, but a really good way of, of sort of really improving fast as well and focusing on those things that you just do wrong all the time because most of the time it is only a few things and as a teacher this is absolutely true because I'm often telling certain students the same things again and again and again so um, if you find out what your 80% problems are in, in your little 20% of this the amount um, then should help thank you John awesome point um, okay so next up is Senia, for not enough time. Hmm. Okay. Uh, you can't learn English all time long because you have to sleep, eat, work, exercising, <laughs> resting. But with some items, you can kill two birds with one stone. Uh, for yep. example, while you're exercising, you can repeat some some vocabulary. So while mm -hmm. you're running, you can learn new words. Mm -hmm. uh, while you're resting, uh, I I prefer rest with books or TV shows. So I watch TV shows and read books on English. Mm -hmm. For me, it's very useful. I know the accent. I think I improve my accent with TV shows. And while I'm reading mm -hmm. books, it's helped me with uh, grammar, words, and so on. And I think yep. uh, the third one, you uh, should stop multitask, multitask, multitask. My God, multitasking, multitasking. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yeah, multitasking. <laughs> yes, you should scroll down your Instagram or visit your profile, email. I think you should block this. Um, Windows for a while while you're learning. It's very helpful. All right, awesome solutions, Ksenia. I like the way that you're so specific. So thank you. Let's see if Ahmed would like to add anything. Is Ahmed still here? Seems to have disappeared. All right, we'll see if he comes back. And thank you, Ksenia, for that one. Let's go to Jose, who's going to talk about writing tips okay. for writing. Okay, to improve your writing, you have to follow uh, 
eight points. Uh, I think uh, you have uh, to brush up on the basics. You have to to start uh, writing simple sentences. When you are feeling confident about it, you have to to go to the next step. Uh, you have to write uh, more complex sentences. The second mm -hmm. the second point is that. Uh, you have to write like uh, it's your job. You have to write uh, three or four essays uh, per, per week. And you have uh, mm -hmm. the third point is that you have to read uh, like it's your job because the best writers are, are uh, also uh, keen uh, readers. I think the fourth, the fourth point is uh, you have to find a writing partner or a good teacher in order that the, the teacher uh, check or, re or review the the the, the ESAs. Um, the five point is that you have to write about topics that uh, you like. Okay. Uh, the sixth point you have to eliminate uh, to eliminate unnecessary words. Uh, the seven point the seven point is that uh, you don't have to be afraid about uh, writing. What uh, do you think? And the last one is that uh, you have to, to be uh, creative. You don't have to plagiarize, um, plagiarize uh, any essays because uh, it uh, doesn't happen. Makes sense. Wow, Jose, that was like a barrage of yeah. awesome points. Thank you. I yes. think all of those are ideas. Um, let's see if Adnan, would you like to add anything or mention anything else because you also chose writing. What would you like to add to that list? I think uh, just uh, he said all what I want. <laughs> and, but, he said uh, everything that you thought of? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But just one thing in addition I want to say. You have to write what you love, what you like. For example, I like football. I uh, I think it's a good idea to write about football, about uh, your team. I think this is a good idea when you write something you like it. I think you will uh, get benefit from. Absolutely, it. good point. Definitely great point. I think this is also applicable to other situations, Adnan, not just writing. Um, reading as well, watching things as well. If you find things that you you enjoy, it's much easier to actually watch them and continue than if you're trying to struggle through something that you wouldn't actually read in your own language or write. Um, okay, everybody's been awesome. Now, have I missed anybody out? No? Okay. It's me, it's me, I'm sorry. Oh, Natasha! Yes. All right, so did, you disappeared at some point, and um, what yes. we've been doing, did, have you been following what we've been doing? Uh, I would like to say about forgetting things uh, easily, it's my problem, and I suppose that first of all we uh, have to be uh, motivated, uh, and in this case it uh, will be easy for us uh, to find uh, more important and um, interesting things uh, uh, which we uh, would like to learn. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, uh, I like the rule about 80 and 20 percent because I absolutely agree with this. Uh, I mean that uh, we uh, have to use, for first of all, uh, only useful and um, uh, significant uh, for us things, uh, rules, words, uh, and uh, uh, try to use them uh, daily in our English speech with other uh, other people or uh, with uh, uh, themselves, and um, um, constantly uh, improving our uh, our knowledge uh, by learning uh, new words. The new phrasal verbs and uh, repetitive uh, the, uh, them as well. Okay, so continuous learning. Do you think that would and and repetition? How about that? Yes, and believe them, uh, themselves <laughs> that we uh, have reached our goals goals at the nearest time. Well done! Awesome one to add on to the end, Natasha. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So guys, um, that was a superb little 
little brainstorm, and I think some of those ideas were really, really helpful, even for me. Um, as a teacher, you're always trying to think of ideas that will help your students, and I think some of the key things that stood out for me were the 80-20 rule, um, which can apply in lots of different situations, and also the fact that it's you need to do something you're interested in, and there's so many resources out there. It's worth spending a bit of time finding something that interests you because it will keep you going. So, if you guys don't mind, I'd like to actually share some of these on my Verbling Facebook page because I think they will help all the other students. So, um, if anyone does not want me to share their ideas, please um, let me know in the chat box or after class or whatever. Um, but what I will do is create a post and add these ideas, maybe some more that I think of. Um, and open it up so if anyone else wants to visit my Facebook page and add some more ideas, then please feel free because I think it's a useful thing. We didn't have, we had a couple of um, problems okay. like inability to explain things missed out, so I'll see if I can add some ideas for that. Does anyone want to add anything further before we go? Nope, I've used up all your brain energy for today. <laughs> I hope not. I hope if you carry on with your next classes, try and put some of these ideas into practice. Um, okay. Have a great evening, guys. Lovely to see you again today. You. Maybe I'll see bye. some of you tomorrow. Take care. See you later. Thank hey, you. Amy, bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.